so uh, I'm going to present here the work uh, we have done in, uh, in the Sandbox event. Uh, collab I collaborated with Alejandro and Antonio. Uh, and our work was trying to use uh, transient and transient separation uh, for instrument recognition to see if it's going to prove it or not. Uh, so basically our idea and motivation of why uh, separating into transient and non-transient is because both of these uh, parts of the sounds are related to our timber perception. Uh, for example, the transient parts uh, of different instruments, sounds they have for different shapes, and this helps in the in the recognizing the, the timbre. While the non-transient or stationary part uh, is deeply related with the timbre, with the relation between energy of the harmonics. Uh, and then we decided to set to to do a separation into transient and stationary to see that by explicitly giving those two types of information to the model. Uh, then it would uh, be able to learn more efficient feature maps. So that was our main motivation to do it. Uh, and it's important to, before uh, showing you the model itself, say a little bit about transients and stationary. Uh, this is the ASTR model for, for sound. And usually uh, the transients are um, basically the attack part of the note, uh, as you can see here in blue. Uh, it has high variation volume uh, in a short duration, while the stationary part is uh, decay and sustain usually. Uh, sometimes the release uh, can, can be stationary for some sounds and transients for others, so we didn't put the, the release here. Uh, and it has a longer duration uh, and lower frequency variation. Uh, so it's also important to say that uh, transient stationary source separation is not harmonic percussive source separation. Uh, they are similar, uh, but the harmonic percussive source separation, you try to separate uh, into harmonic and percussive instruments, uh, while the transient stationary, uh, you actually want to extract all the transient parts from the stationary, so there's no ground truth. So it's impossible to do supervised training with uh, transient stationary source separation. Uh, so we decided to use a signal processing based technique that's with medium filtering uh, to do this transient stationary source separation. I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. So basically we have the spectrogram and we use horizontal uh, median filtering just by replacing every uh, bin here by the median of a short horizontal window, then it would get rid of all the fast uh, changes in, in frequency vertically. Then it would give you a more smoother on the horizontal um, part, while at the bottom branch, you substitute every, every point in the spectrogram by the vertical uh, by the mean of a short vertical window, uh, medium, sorry, not mean. Uh, this would, this would uh, get rid of uh, all the horizontal lines, and then you have a more vertical shaped spectrogram here and horizontal shaped spectrogram here. And this would uh, make a transient stationary separation that we used in our experiments. Uh, so we use the MusicNet data set to perform this. Uh, the MusicNet data set. Uh, has uh, 11 different classes, as you can see here at the bottom. Uh, however, only seven of them are on the test set. Uh, they divided the music net into training and test set already. Uh, so we, we used uh, seven class, class uh, seven. Uh, we tried to recognize only seven instruments from those 11, but we didn't remove the others' instruments on the training. So we created a, uh, an architecture that would uh, recognize those seven in the presence of others instruments too. So it has no drums, uh, no vocals, uh, and those are the instruments we use to recognize. And this data set has labels for all the onsets and offsets uh, and also the notes and a lot of other annotations, but we didn't use the pitch or any other type of labels, only the instrument. 
Uh, and you can have, uh, of course, multiple instruments at the same time, too. Uh, this is uh, what we use. Uh, so we have a uh, central frame of analysis. Uh, and uh, we, we took uh, n past frames and n future frames. And they tried to recognize the instruments that were playing in the central frame uh, based on this input. Uh, and we used eight classes. Seven of them would be for one of the instruments. And the, the last class would be like other instruments. All of those uh, four instruments that were on the test set, or were on the training set, but not on the test set. Uh, and silence would be all zeros. This is the model we, we used. Uh, so it's basically a convolutional uh, branch here. And then fully connected branches, uh, three fully connected with eight classes at the end. Uh, and the convolutional stages are based on a previously proposed uh, HPSS model uh, published on WASPA uh, last year and uh, using different kind of shapes. So you can see that the input goes to a uh, convolutional network is three by three filters and also using vertical filters and also horizontal filters and then goes to maxi pooling layers and then they are concatenated so this thing is done three times and after we have everything concatenated i input to the uh, fully connected for example and um, here how the model looks like when we have the separated tracks so basically we separate into transients and stationary using the median filtering technique. And we use the, basically the same uh, model here and the first branch and then concatenate here uh, and use the same uh, uh, fully connected layers to make the classification. Uh, and now the results we have, uh, you can see the yellow part is um, ground truth. So here's ground truth and here's also ground truth. And every row, is a different instrument. So row zero is piano and row one is uh, violin. And, and you can see that for the original model, uh, there was a little bit of uh, piano findings here, but you can see that it was greatly increased when we had the separation. Also here on the second half, we, we exactly don't know why this happened because you can see that there was not actually much activations here. Uh, we're still investigating why the model didn't work that properly on the second half uh, for any class here. But you can see that the separation for piano started showing up here. Uh, also, uh, on the, uh, the third class here is the uh, viola. And you can see that it actually detected viola. And there was no viola. And now you can see that it's a little bit better uh, on this case too. Uh, and here is the table of the results. Uh, basically, for piano, you can see a great improvement on the F score uh, from 0 0.18 for 0 0.6. Uh, for violin and viola, they also, and cello, they also increased. But for others, uh, instruments, it actually uh, got worse. So we thought this was really interesting. Uh, actually, uh, and you can see that for uh, string-based instruments, it seems that uh, the transient and harmonic separation uh, improves the, the recognition, but for bra brass and woodwind, uh, it actually uh, decreases the performance. And uh, we believe that this is because uh, the transient parts on the string instruments are more prominent, so then it has more information on the transients uh, than uh, the brass and women, and this helps in the recognition. Uh, of course, we still have to do more testing. Uh, we want to test, uh, trying different models for the transient part. Uh, for example, use uh, maybe a time-based domain model for the transient while using convolutional for the uh, stationary part and then concatenating them. So we can also do those types of questions in the, in the future. And instead of using two inputs, we could just stack on different channels. Uh, so uh, those types of tests we didn't do yet and we still need to do. Uh, 
and also uh, doing post processing smoothing and for the checking the activations. Yeah, so that was our work uh, for the sandbox.